Sonic the Hedgehog. Definitely the best video game movie to come out of the 90s. Except for one thing, it was kind of 20 years late, with the movie coming out in 2020. But the fact that the movie looks and feels like a 90s movie only makes it more awesome. Based on the Sega video games, Sonic is a blue anamorphic hedgehog from another world who can move at super speed, who escapes his world into our world, where he lives a lonely life hiding from the humans. However, when the sinister Dr. Robotnik, played delightfully by Jim Carrey, starts tracking Sonic down with his menacing technology, Sonic teams up with his idol, a sheriff of a town called Greens Hill called Tom, played by James Marsden where the two go on a road trip to help Sonic get his magical gold rings, while also avoiding Dr. Robotnik, where many fun, action-packed misadventures take place with plenty of laughs. Exploring the behind the scenes of this movie was like going down a deep, deep, deep rabbit hole. Or, in this case, would that be Hedgehog Hole? The Sonic movie had to overcome years and years and years of many hurdles in order to get made. So let's look into the long history of this movie by exploring 10 things that you didn't know about the Sonic movie. Yep, today I'm actually talking about Sonic. Man, I love my job. Number 10, Origins of Sonic. The creation of Sonic the Hedgehog goes all the way back to 1990. The Japanese Sega company had released its Sega Genesis, which boasted 16-bit graphics. But the company just couldn't compete with Nintendo, of which had just released the insanely popular Super Mario Bros. 3 game, which was becoming the biggest selling video game of all time. Sega knew that it needed a mascot like Mario, one that will appeal to younger gamers. Programmers Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima created a demo of a game, featuring a character who could curve into a ball and can move very fast but very smoothly. However, this fast-moving character was just sprites at that stage and needed an identity and thus needed to become Sega's mascot. At first, this fast-paced character was a rabbit with big ears, but it was felt that that concept was too hard to design for the game. Then the concept of a hedgehog was created, who at first was brown, but then changed to blue to match Sega's logo. They also designed Sonic to be cool and slick, in order to appeal to kids, and to have a positive attitude, of which they were inspired by Bill Clinton's public can-do image. Dr. Eggman, otherwise known as Robotnik, was actually originally a design considered for Sonic but was rejected. But rather than let the design go to waste, it was decided to make him Sonic's enemy. There was a feeling within the Sega company that Sonic just wouldn't catch on with American children. So the original Sonic video game was packaged in with the Genesis consoles when released in other parts of the world. And in a turn of events, the game was hugely successful, and Sega finally had a mascot who could rival Mario. Sonic 2 soon followed, which kept up the newfound interest in the character. Gamers loved the fast-paced speed of the game, and how Sonic could roll into a ball at high speed while collecting gold rings. And so the character's pop cultural imprint took off from there. And that was the biggest difference between Sonic and Mario. While Mario just sort of, you know, bounced around, Sonic flew! This character was on turbo charge, and it felt like nothing could stop him. Not even the boundaries of the game itself. Number 9. Development for the movie started all the way back in the 90s. Yeah, remember how I said in the intro that the Sonic movie is the best movie from the 90s to not come out of the 90s? Well, the Sonic movie production actually started all the way back in the 90s. 1993 to be precise, the same year that the Super Mario Bros. movie was released. Also at that time, Deke Entertainment had produced two separate TV shows based on the character. So it seemed that the next step was to have a feature film, with the American Sega CEO Tom Kalinske pitching a Sonic movie to major studios to try and get them enticed. And so Sonic finally found a movie deal with MGM. 
yep, the hedgehog and the lion were going to pair up to release a Sonic movie. Number 8. Sonic Wonders of the World Filmmaker and future writer of Tron Legacy, Richard Jeffries, was hired by MGM and Sega to write a script for the Sonic movie. Oh, and by the way, he was told that his script had to feature a Sega Saturn, which was Sega's latest upcoming console at the time. Had that happened, just imagine how much that movie would have aged. He wrote a script for a Sonic movie called Sonic Wonders of the World. The script was submitted in 1995, and the reaction from both Sega and MGM seemed really positive. However, the production stalled. There are claims that creative differences and companies wanting higher shares in the profits got in the way, so the production just seemed to diminish. And later on, there supposedly was an attempt to revive the movie with the Spielberg company DreamWorks, but it didn't happen. And oh boy, we're not even finished yet with Sonic's long journey onto the big screen. In fact, this episode probably should have been called 10 Things You Didn't Know About the Lead Up to the Sonic the Hedgehog Movie. Number 7. Then there was going to be an animated Sonic movie. So after the failed attempt of a live-action Sonic movie with MGM, in 2002 the cartoon company Dick was contacted about the possibility of making an animated Sonic movie, but it was to act as a continuation from the Sonic animated series. Which would have been a brave move considering that the cartoon was 10 years old at that time, and there may not have exactly been too many people remembering it. Ken Penders, who wrote the Sonic Archie comics, came up with a script called Sonic Armageddon, which was not a continuation of the cartoon show, but rather a reboot, a brand new origin story which looks into Sonic's uprising. Plans had started to move forward in 2003, but by 2007 the movie was scrapped due to the death of Sega's licensing manager, who was the one overseeing the Sonic Armageddon project. Man, this movie really couldn't catch a break. Number 6. From Sony to Paramount The 2020 Sonic movie as we all know it really came into fruition in 2013, when Sony acquired the rights to Sonic the Hedgehog, with the intention of making a live-action movie based around the character. Sega was on board, as well as Columbia Pictures and the Japanese CGI company Maza Animation Planet, whom had provided the CGI cutscenes for several Sonic video games. Filmmaker and animator Jeff Fowler came on board as director, who had previously worked on the animation for Where the Wild Things Are, as well as providing the animation for a 2005 Sonic game. Neil H. Mortiz came on board as co-producer, who at that time was having success with Columbia and Sony, as he was the producer of the Jump Street movies, with the project being overseen by executive producer Tim Miller, who would go on to direct Deadpool. I'm not sure why Sony suddenly had an interest in Sonic at that point in time. My theory is this, and it's just a theory. At that time, Sony also would have been working on the movie Pixels, which also featured old-school video game characters like Pac-Man. So maybe the company, or at least someone in the company, had a vested interest in making movies about old-school video game characters. Also keep in mind that a year before Sony bought the rights to Sonic, Disney had released Wreck-It Ralph, which also featured old-school video games, one of them even being Sonic the Hedgehog. However, the production went into development hell with Sony and Columbia, and the production was left in a turnabout situation. But all was not lost as Paramount Pictures then brought the rights to the Sonic movie from Sony in 2017, with pretty much most of the same crew still on board when it was at the hands of Sony. So finally, after 24 years of being in development hell, the Sonic movie was finally starting to take form. Number 5. Casting For the Sonic movie, it was decided to tell a Sonic origin story, an adventure of how Sonic became the Super Sonic that we've all seen in the video games, and the story was going to specifically focus on the formation of the rivalry between Sonic and his nemesis Robotnik. There were rumours that Paul Rudd was going to play the character Tom, who was a local sheriff who joins forces with Sonic, where the two form a bromance with Tom helping to take down Robotnik. But it was James Marsden who ended up getting the part, and he's perfectly great and enjoyable in the role, with Jim Carrey being cast as a younger, less bald Robotnik. I think that the casting of Marsden and Carrey just adds to the 1990s feel of the movie. After all, both actors had their careers really take off in the 90s. 
and I love Carrie's performance in particular, as it feels like he's going back to his more wacky, over-the-top physical comedy roots of Ace Ventura and The Mask. I remember watching Sonic for the first time, and it really felt like I was watching old-school Jim Carrey again, which was a welcomed return. And Carrey himself even compared his portrayal of Robotnik to his previous portrayal of the Riddler, saying that they would be a great team. Then we have Sonic himself. Physically, he was a CGI character, but he was voiced by actor, comedian, and filmmaker Ben Schwartz, who previously helped to bring the sounds alive for BB-8 in The Force Awakens, as well as voicing Dewey in the 2017 DuckTales reboot series. And he does a great job as Sonic. He perfectly captures the character and really brings Sonic to life, and I also really like his cheeky nature. Number 4. Ted helped to bring Sonic to life. The Sonic movie was mainly being shot on location around Vancouver, Canada, with additional filming taking place at New York and United Arab Emirates. While filming, Ben Schwartz, who voiced Sonic, was often on set standing in for his character, working with James Marsden. The effects of the movie were provided by five special effects companies, including the as-mentioned Marza Animation Planet, as well as Digital Domain, Moving Picture Company, Trickster, and Blur Studio. When it came to having Sonic interact with live-action footage, the production used the movie Ted for a reference as to how it could be achieved, by observing the CGI teddy bear character and going by that film with how to have an entirely CGI character interact with the real world. So using the Ted movies as a stepping stone, so to speak, they were able to create the Sonic character for the movie. So, if you think about it, if there was no Ted, then there would probably be no Sonic. Number 3. Removed in Post The Sonic movie went under the working title of Casino Night, which is a reference to the Casino Night Zone in the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 video game. I don't think the movie was actually going to be called Casino Night, but it was used to throw off the media and other people trying to get news on the then upcoming Sonic movie. There was also an entire character who was removed from the Sonic movie, that being Riff Raff. No, not the Rocky Horror Picture Show guy, but Riff Raff the American Rapper. It was announced that he was going to star in the movie, and the rapper even supposedly shared the trailer of Sonic on his Instagram account. It's not certain who Riff Raff was going to be in Sonic, but what we do know is that his scenes were cut from the final film. Speaking of things being dropped from the movie, one of Sonic's early trailers featured the Coolio song Gangster's Paradise, which was released in 1995 and was part of the Dangerous Minds soundtrack. Many were left baffled as to why Gangster's Paradise was used for the trailer. Not that they thought there was anything wrong with the song or anything, but rather they felt that it was just out of place, not feeling like the kind of song you would associate with Sonic the Hedgehog, and that the use of the song in the trailer made the Sonic movie look like it was going to have a serious, gloomy tone. It's probably famously one of the strangest song choices for a movie's trailer. And yeah, that wasn't the only problem with the trailer either. Number 2. Sonic and the Controversial Original Design So an early trailer for the Sonic movie was released, and it caused quite the backlash. Eager fans were greeted with a Sonic who didn't look like the one that they knew and loved and grew up with. This new Sonic had more of a human physique, as well as two separate eyes, and it just generally looked... off. With many claiming that it looked kind of creepy. This updated version of Sonic caused a meltdown on social media, particularly on Twitter, with disappointed fans voicing their disapproval. Suddenly, the Sonic trailer was the subject of online mockery and uproar. Supposedly, even Sonic's creators, Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima, didn't like this redesign of their character. So it would have seemed that fans would not have gone to see the new Sonic movie with Sonic currently looking how he was. So in May 2019, director Jeff Fowler announced on Twitter that the character would be redesigned to look more like the iconic Sonic that we're all familiar with. And it worked! We ended up with a much more faithful looking Sonic, which not only made it feel more like Sonic, but it just generally looked better. It came at a cost though, as an additional $5 million was needed for the redesigns, and its release date was pushed back. The movie was originally going to be released in November 2019, but ended up being released in February 2020. 
Even though many fans were in favor of this redesign, I remember at the time there were some people who didn't like the fact that the character had to be redesigned in the first place. I saw a few comments questioning, is this right that we let fans dictate art and how to make movies, as well as creative directions? Personally, and I may be wrong, but I don't think it's an issue. If the end result leads to a better product, then it's worth it. And critical reaction and backlash has led to changes being made to movies for decades now, as thanks to screen test audiences, filmmakers have often noted reactions of what the audiences didn't like about the movies before their releases and have gone back and made changes in order to appeal more to audiences. In fact, there are many well-known classic movies out there that have had changes made to them at the last minute thanks to test audiences and critical reactions, some of which many people may not even know had changes made. It's just that Sonic was very public and under a microscope thanks to the social media age. So I don't think it's such a radical idea for a movie to go back and fix up issues after negative backlash. <laughs> so finally, after 20 odd years of being in development hell, with several potential movies being dropped, with financial backers and production companies entering and leaving the production, as well as having to go back and fix the design of the main character, it'll seem that finally, finally, Sonic is ready to be unleashed into the world on the big screen. And it would seem that from here it was all smooth sailing and that nothing could go wrong. I mean, it's not like there was going to be a worldwide crisis that got in the way of the release, right? 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 Yeah, look, about that. Number one, Sonic against all odds. Sonic was released in the States in February 2020, but it was released at the start of the pandemic. So there was the reality that there probably wasn't an awful lot of people going to movie theaters at that time. Sonic was meant to be released in Japan in March 2020, but due to closure of theaters thanks to the global issue, it wouldn't get released in Japan till June. Due to the closure of theaters, Sonic was released digitally and through home media before the usual 90-day cinematic run. But despite this real-life crisis, the Sonic movie was actually very successful, bringing in nearly $320 million on its $85 million budget. And if good old Wikipedia is anything to go by, it was the sixth highest grossing movie of 2020. I mean, yeah, there probably wasn't that much competition that year. As well as becoming the highest grossing superhero movie of 2020, knocking Marvel off its mantle of having highest grossing superhero movies from 2010 to 2019. There were a few negative reviews of Sonic, but they were mainly positive. It took a long time to get there, with many hurdles, but we did eventually get the Sonic movie, and honestly, I loved it. When I watched it, I was actually surprised with just how good it was and just how much fun I was having. Once again, it captured the essence of the 90s. It just had so much carefree fun and adventure, and was a welcomed break from the usual doom and gloom we get in franchise movies these days. To me, it honestly felt like a movie from the 90s that had been hidden in a vault and finally released in 2020. I loved the movie's humour and how energetic it felt. And personally, I think all the delays benefited the movie, because I just don't think we would have had the right technology to bring Sonic to life on the big screen in 1995 or 2003. So in the end, it all worked out. The Sonic movie did many things that I wasn't expecting it to do, like making me laugh, as well as finding the movie generally exciting and enjoyable. But above all, after many years of being an adult, it actually made me care about Sonic again. Sonic is a rare movie that makes you feel like you're going on a fun nostalgia trip, but without relying on too many member berries, it's still its own thing. But above all, it's actually, honestly, a buddy movie. Mixed in with a wonderful over-the-top performance by Jim Carrey. I mean, what's not to love? So it's nice to know that the Sonic movie can bring older and younger audiences together, with both of them equally getting behind the adventures of Sonic. Anyway, I'm Minty, and yeah, that first Sonic design was kind of nightmare fuel. I'm sorry, but it was. See ya!